Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So, this week's Advanced Problem of the Week was asking you to prove this trigonometric identity. So, it's actually rather straightforward once you kind of figure out, I know sometimes trigonometric identities can be difficult because once you start going down the wrong path, you're pretty much done for. Um, but in this case, um, after some, some trial and error, it's, it's clear that it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. So I'll just go over how we would solve this problem. So we can begin by just distributing out the first term here. So we have, we're just going to basically foil this out. So we have sine x times tangent of x. plus sine of x times cotangent of x, plus cosine of x times tangent of x, plus cosine of x times cotangent of x. OK, so now I'm going to use the definition, or I'm going to expand out tangent of x and cotangent of x into sine of x over cosine of x and cosine of x over sine of x, respectively. So as you can see, this is going to be equal to sine of x, and then tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x, plus sine of x times cotangent, cotangent of x, which is equal to cosine of x over sine of x, plus cosine of x times tangent of x, which is again sine of x over cosine of x. plus finally cosine of x times cotangent of x, which is once again cosine of x over sine of x. OK, so now I'm going to distribute the terms on the outside into the, to combine these into one fraction here, so for all of this. So sine of x times sine of x is going to be sine squared of x over cosine of x. Plus, and as you can see here, we have sine of x in the numerator and sine of x in the denominator. So they cancel out, and we're left with just a cosine of x here. Same thing happens here. We have cosine of x in the numerator and cosine of x in the denominator. So those will cancel out. We end up with just a sine of x here. And then over here, we have cosine of x and cosine of x on the top. And cosine x times cosine x is going to be cosine squared of x all over sine of x. Great. So now we want to get all of this into one fraction. So we're going to find the common denominator, which is in this case going to be sine of x times cosine of x. And we're going to multiply everything out here in such a way to obtain that common denominator. So here, in order to get the denominator of sine x times cosine of x, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by sine of x. So what we have here, sine cubed of x. Um, I'll write this all in one big fraction because that was our goal, was to get this all in one common fraction, over cosine x, sine x. So plus, in order to get the common denominator here, for the cosine of x term, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by sine x, cosine x. So we're going to be left here with cosine squared x times sine of x, plus, and the same thing goes here for the sine of x term. In order to get the common denominator, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by sine of x times cosine of x. So we're left here with sine squared of x cosine x plus, and then to get the common denominator here, we need to multiply the cosine squared of x times another cosine of x, because we only have a sine of x in the denominator here. So that is going to end up being cosine cubed of x. OK, so it looks like we're going to have maybe kind of a factor by grouping situation here. So I'm going to shift these terms around a little bit so that it becomes more clear when we do the factor by grouping what's happening. So this is just equal to not moving, uh, j j just moving terms around here, not doing any more uh, manipulations. I'm trying to, why I'm moving this around is to make it clear that we are going to do a factor by grouping. Um, so because it can be difficult to kind, of, to kind of visualize when you have all these terms here, where I'm trying to group the terms of the highest sine powers and, groups, and group the terms of the highest cosine powers so that we can factor out sines and cosines respectively. This is going to be equal to cosine squared of x 
cosine or plus cosine cubed of x plus cosine squared of x times sine of x all over cosine of x sine of x. So moving back up here, I'm now going to factor out a sine squared term from these two terms and factor out a cosine squared term from these two terms. So you factor out a sine squared x and what we're left with here is just sine of x plus cosine x plus and then here we're going to do the same thing except with cosine. We're going to factor out a cosine squared term. So we have at the outside cosine squared x. And if you divide out a cosine squared x from cosine cubed x, you just get cosine x. Take out the cosine squared x here. And you're left with just sine of x. And again, all over sine of x times cosine of x. Okay, so now as you can see, we have factored by grouping in such a way that now we have the same terms here. And we can tell that this is going to be what we want because we have a sine squared and a cosine squared and we know that we're trying to get some cancellation. So we know that the sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1 by trigonometric identity. So that fact is going to come in handy here when this is equal to sine of x plus sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x times sine of x cosine of x by our factor by grouping and over sine of x times cosine of x. Okay, so I'm going to use the fact that by a trigonometric identity, sine squared of x plus cosine of x, cosine squared of x just goes to 1. So this term all goes to 1, so we're left with here on the top, oops, this is plus cosine squared of x, oh, cosine of x, excuse me. Uh, sine of x plus cosine of x all over sine of x cosine of x. So our final steps now are going to be to break up this fraction. Because we have addition in the numerator, we can break up the fraction just like this. This is equal to sine of x over sine of x cosine of x plus, and then we have here cosine of x over sine of x, cosine of x. Okay, and now we have some cancellation here. We have a sine of x in the numerator and a sine of x in the, denom in the denominator. So we're left with 1 over cosine of x plus, and over here we have cosine in the numerator and cosine in the denominator. Cancels out, and we're left with 1 over sine of x, which equals, write this right here, which equals, as we can see, we know that 1 over cosine of x is equal to uh, secant of x. And 1 over sine of x is equal to cosecant of x. OK. So as we can see, we have obtained secant of x plus cosecant of x, which is exactly what we were trying to prove. So we had some nice cancellations here. And we did some factor by group, factoring by grouping, which allowed us to use a trigonometric identity and then expand it, this fraction like this to obtain our final answer. So for more Problem of the Week videos, you can see our playlist here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can click here. And for more information about the Center of Math, you can click here for centerofmath.org. Thank you for watching.